So, Christophe, again, Atlas featured highly in the uh, summer physics conferences. Other than the Higgs boson, what were the main results covered? I think what's interesting is that we can see a large number of experiments, both uh, at the LHC, but of course outside, smaller experiments, which are really closing down onto what might be lying around just outside what we're seeing right now. So we're exploring a lot of new ground, uh, especially thanks to the LHC, but also thanks to satellite experiments like Fermi or the Xenon. Both experiments allow to search for indirect and direct search of the dark matter. Mm -hmm. So I think uh, that's what's very exciting right now, and we see we're closing on to what's closing in and it's uh, clearly been an interesting agenda. Summer has indeed been busy for CERN as I said. Francois, can you tell us more? Yes, this has been a very, very busy summer, Anna. Uh, end of August and early September, the Arts Electronica Digital Arts uh, Festival of Linz in Austria has started a partnership for three years uh, with CERN. That's in the frame of the new CERN cultural policy which has been announced earlier this year. This festival, which was called Origin, was also the opportunity to launch the first open calls for the Collide at CERN Artists Residency Programme. So as the name uh, says, this uh, programme allows artists to reside at CERN and to mix uh, with the CERN community and to integrate it. Uh, by the way, artists can still apply until the 31st of October. Uh, many artists seem very interested in getting closer to CERN and its, uh, its experiments. For example, earlier in uh, August, we had the visit from Alan Parsons, the founder of the Alan Parsons Project uh, Band. Uh, he came to CERN, he rewrote his tour uh, to visit CERN. It was very interesting. And soon uh, in October, uh, CERN will be collaborating with director David Lynch in a show called Mathematica. Uh, he will uh, set up in the Fondation Cartier as from 20. Uh, 21st sorry, of October. Uh, then, uh, more recently, on the 23rd of September, CERN welcomed the Researchers' Night. It was an opportunity for, for about 200 uh, young students, aged from 13 to 18, to join CERN and join physicists in the LHC and the detectors control rooms, where the physicists could, could share their passion about uh, science and show their daily job. Uh, the parents were allowed to uh, enter a science cafe and ask many questions to the CERN staff and get uh, answers. This was part of a bigger project led by the European Commission. Uh, Researchers' Night was having uh, events in about 320 cities all around Europe. And then finally, on the 16th of September, CERN announced that Israel, which was already an observer of the CERN Council, uh, became an associate member state uh, of CERN. So this demonstrates the current ongoing uh, extension of CERN beyond the, the historical borders of Europe. Fantastic. Thank you very much, François. Monica, the LHCB experiment also featured highly on the summer conference's agendas. So LHCB studies the difference between matter, matter and antimatter, studying the beauty quark or B quark. The results of the experiment are very impressive. Can you tell us more about it? Yes. Uh, uh, first of all, what I can say is that the experiment is performing very, very well, brilliant, brilliantly, I, I, I would even say. And uh, uh, it has already achieved uh, in many uh, channels, in many decay channels, a precision superior to, to that uh, of other competing, competitor experiments that have been running uh, for uh, you know, a very long time, and uh, this only after one year, essentially. And uh, in particular, uh, on some uh, rare decays, uh, which are in principle uh, uh, sensitive to new physics beyond the standard model, the accuracy that uh, LHCBs achieve is better than uh, what uh, uh, was known uh, and, uh, until, uh, until now. And um, uh, this is what uh, um, created a lot of excitement and, uh, during the summer, at so the summer conference. You referred to the standard model, which describes, among other things, the elementary particles which constitute yeah. matter. Is it still valid? Uh, yes, I mean, we are trying to shake it as much as we can at the LHC, but so far we uh, haven't uh, managed to break quite it, I'm afraid. It. Thank you. Time for a journey, Stefan. Where are you taking us? Yes, I'm going to teleport myself to a very special building here at CERN that hosts eminent physicists. Follow me. <laughs> I am at the top of building number 40, a building that was designed by a group of architects from Lausanne in Switzerland and that was built in the 90s. It was built to welcome many physicists coming from all around the world to CERN. In the daylight brought by the roof, right in the center of the building, a very nice cafeteria. Being circular, building 40 has the same shape as particle accelerators. It also symbolizes the openness and the confluence of scientists and ideas. On six stories, physics at all levels. Hundreds of desks, it's a beautiful think tank. 
many meeting rooms. At this time, it's the Mune Analysis Task Force. Two levels underground with conference rooms. See you, Anna. Welcome back. Thank so you very much. I think I saw your offices there in this uh, building. Am I right? <laughs> yes, it's a nice place. Yeah. So, Stefan, media coverage of CERN is frequent. The latest big news on 23rd of September was this extraordinary claim that measurements have been made showing that particles may go faster than the speed of light. Mm -hmm. And uh, for, for once, neutrinos that are untraceable particles uh, were visible to everybody. Uh, just to remind you, the experiment called OPERA in Italy measures neutrinos that are sent from CERN 732 kilometers away. The scientists in OPERA measured neutrinos flying a bit faster than light, which is impossible according to their relativity theory. They spent months trying to find where the flow was in their measurement, methods, uh, computation, experiments, uh, apparatus. They didn't find anything. So they decided to call for help and to call the rest of the world, the rest of the scientists of the world, to review their results. And this uh, call for help raised a huge wave in the press, and I have some figures with me. Uh, for instance, there were thousands of uh, articles in the press, blogs. We had 150,000 visitors on the CERN's homepage the, the day it was announced. 122,000 connections to the web seminar that was given by Dario Auterio, the scientist who made these very odd measurements. And uh, as uh, Antonio Ereditato says, who is the spokesman of Opera, these measurements are very uncertain. We would like to be very prudent at the moment. We would like just to say that we made a measurement, this measurement is accurate, and therefore we would leave to the entire community, which is actually the goal of this seminar today, the, such a way that the, the whole community could tell us give us interpretations or suggestions and certainly one thing which is fundamental redo the experiment in different conditions different groups different people and hopefully to find the same result Francois you just told me that you have uh, also odd statistics but from a uh other kind. Yeah, in fact, I've been told that there were that day uh, twice as many persons connecting to the CERN recruitment site, so we might have many new colleagues thanks to the neutrino. Great new colleagues. <laughs> Welcome. <laughs> so now some um, few press coverage and uh, we'll start uh, with the BBC News who speaks of uh, speed of light results under scrutiny at CERN. The Economist published a very, very nice limerick. I will not read it uh, to you right now, but you can read it on their website. And to conclude with the New York Times, which uh, quotes a CERN blog called the Quantum Diaries, and the quote is like this, the only thing that was going faster than light was gossip. Thank you very much. So finally, what can we hope for in terms of major results by the end of the, this year, Yves? I think by the end of the, this year we'll make a strong statement on the Higgs boson. We'll make a strong statement with some hints of observation by the combination of the ATLAS and CMS experiment or quite strong evidence of the exclusion of the Higgs boson and we probably will need some 2012 data to close the issue. LHCB is a precision experiment so we will continue to make precise measurement and improve our accuracy and uh, uh, increase uh, the number of channels uh, that we are studying and uh, something uh, exotic may appear any time. Who knows? We hope. Christophe? Well now we have uh, already recorded four times more data than we had already during the summer so you can imagine we are, especially for supersymmetry but maybe all other theories, we are, we are really uh, excited to look at this new data. There's plenty to look forward to. Thank you very much for being Thanks. with us today. Thank you, Stéphane. Thank you, François. Thank you for watching. If you want to see this program again, it will be available on CDS and YouTube. But I'll give you rendezvous, as we say in French, same time, same place next week.